Let us start the session by chanting Namotase. Namotase Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhase Namotase Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhase Namotase Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhase All right. Suddhamanvasana. I need to stop saying all right all the time. <laughs> Mental note to self. <laughs> all right. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Again. <laughs> okay. So do we have any questions about um, what we discussed earlier in the earlier class after going through the note? Do we have any questions that anyone would like to ask? Or are we good to go? All right, we are good to go. Yes. Bhante, um, that um, I didn't quite understand what was meant by uh, uh, breathing in experience in the mental formations. What does that mean? Breathing in experience in the mental formations, which was... Number seven, uh, number seven in that... Uh, uh, now... Vedana Prasanna. Yes, yes. Now, Vedana Upasana, when it comes to the first, which is Kaya Upasana. Yes. Hold on. When it comes to the first, which is Kaya Upasana, Kaya Upasana is about the foundations that the meditator builds in order to cultivate a sense of samadhi leading into jhana, right? After Kaya Pasana comes Vedana Pasana, which is the building of, which is the entry into jhana, right? When it comes to Chitta Pasana, Chitta Pasana is experiencing of the mind which is in jhana, right? And when it comes to Dhammanupasana, it is about experiencing mentality and physicality as a whole, now using the jhana to go into this decisive insight which leads into Mangapala, right? So when it comes to in Vedana Upasana, when it comes to seeing the experiencing of, yeah, it's it, uh, breathing in, experiencing the mental formations here. When it comes to breathing in, experiencing the mental formations, this is the, the same method given here in the previous notes apply to the second and third causes according to Acham Brahm which is when the beautiful breath is established, it may appear that your breath has disappeared, that you have this beautiful, stable peace, but no breath. You are, however, still breathing. But the breath is no longer being experienced as a touch of the body. Instead, it is experienced as an object of mind, right? As an object of mind. Earlier, before we came into this sutra, we explained this position of experiencing the breath as a separate entity and now wholly embracing the experience itself, right? Wholly experiencing the experience itself. Here, it speaks of a meditator's experience of now being able to embrace the motions of the breath beyond its simple physicality, but now as a mental object, the mental object being the experience. Do you understand? Now, I guess not, Lakshman. <laughs> I will <laughs> now Sorry, example, let's say let's take this example. Now a person from the shore of the beach 
is watching the waves right is watching the waves now the person sees the waves going up and down just like a person now observing the breath mm -hmm. now the other instance is now the person who observed from afar and now the person who is literally in the ocean and the wave going past this person, right? Where now the experience itself is the moment. Mm. Earlier, we experienced the breath as a physicality. Now, what we are experiencing in the present is the breath as a mental object, which means we are not observing the physicality, but now we are observing the state of presence of mind at that moment. Hmm. Right? Okay, Bhante, I, I begin to understand. Thank you. You are switching from feeling to knowing. Hmm. Earlier, you are feeling the rising and passing. Now, you are in a state where the experience itself is you at that moment. Do you understand? Yes, Bhante, yes. As if another example is you see beauty and you are now feel. You see beauty and now you know beauty for yourself. Yeah. Right? As in a way you look at people who have virtue and morality and now as a person, you have it yourself. Do you understand? Yes, Bhante, yes. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Again, to make it more clear. Okay, Lakshman? Yes, Dhanse. Bhante, um, I, when I uh, do my meditation, mm -hmm. I see uh, the breath as imprint of uh, the breath on the mind so it's external or it's external object it's not internal object so it's the same phenomena you are talking about so when you yeah. when you when you say uh, when i experience uh, breath not as a feeling but as an object an imprint of of uh, the breath on uh, the mind. Where did you gather the word imprint from? I created myself. <laughs> <laughs> because I felt it. It's, 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 it's an outside object. Mm -hmm. It's not internal. It, it's an object, external object. I think in the first tetrad, we are actually, uh, forget about the uh, uh, inside meditation, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, samatha, we are contemplating on external object. So, right? So, when I uh, meditate, I see the breath, or when I inhale and exhale, there's a uh, there's a uh, sign, or there's a uh, imprint, or image, mental image of my breath, inhale and exhale, two mental images. So it is not in the in the in 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 my head or in my body, it's outside. So uh, when you when it comes to I mean this explanation it's the same thing I have actually, even in the first tetrad, mm -hmm. right? Because it is not, uh, it is an uh, object. My, uh, my breath is an object actually. The thing is, first of all, the word imprint, uh, the word imprint puts the word oh, imprint imprint in the sense it's just to say that it's not coming from feeling it's just an object 
It's right. not coming from feeling, but it is it, 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 an object. object. Because, because this object is created because of the flow of air or the uh, 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 vayo datu. Mm -hmm. So when I concentrate on vayo datu, which is going through my nostrils, I get a, a sort of a imprint as an object. Uh, it's not a feeling. I don't have feeling. I I see this. It's a it's a sort of outside uh, object moving in, moving out. So, but that's in the first thread that I get. But uh, Ajahn Brahmo says that that's in the uh, the second thread thread or the rather uh, yeah second. Is it the same? Because I, I can see it took some time to differentiate my breath from feeling to object. Because a lot of time I had, the, when I con contemplate on my breath, I had a feeling. The flow of air going through my nostrils coming out through the nostrils. That was a feeling. But after some time I differentiated this one, it be becomes only mental object or imprint. Yes. I mean, I don't know, uh, Damsari, the, with this word imprint. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, let's talk about object. The word imprint is not sitting with me well, to be very honest with you. No, because it's more of a technical um, term. Mm -hmm. Imprint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if I may explain the dumb city, just let me know if this makes sense, yeah. right? In the earlier stages, when we are in the beginning stages, as we are observing breath, we observe the breath as a physical object. Yes. Which is the bio yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, observing the breath as a physical object, the observance process, the process of observance is done by the mind. Yes. Right? The mind observes. Right? Now, when, when we... Now, this is the position of Vedana Anupasana. In yeah. the position of Vedana Anupasana, what we then sort of base our experiences upon is a state of mind mm. through which we observe. Yeah. Right. Now coming earlier, we observe the physicality. The yeah. physicality was observed by the mind. Right. Yeah. However, we were at a sort of a more distant point observing this process. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the lowering or the uh, what's the word yatapat kirima uh, suppressing suppressing suppression of the hindrances we have a better or rather a far more ease in now lowering the ego centered processes and going into experience based processes now mm -hmm. the experience based processes now rather than now from this point, coming into this mental point and taking the mind as an object. Okay. Not basing the attention upon this, which is a physicality. Yeah. But yeah. What is breathing? Yeah. Yeah. Just as, for example, at a position of samadhi, the body maintains its pose and points. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. We do not change it. The samadhi mentality itself maintains the bodily posture. Right, mm -hmm. the payment of the breathing, physical breathing, while that is rising and passing away. However, now we take as object not the gross vayudatu, but we take the mind which takes mayudatu. We are in mm -hmm. the position of mind. What is the mind at this moment of observation? Okay, that is what we take. Yeah, okay, yeah, uh, just uh, another two minutes. Yeah, Bhante, um. In the first thread, mm -hmm. so exactly that's what I do actually. Mm -hmm. um, when you say uh, uh, in the first thread, thread when you say "sabakaya uh, patsangvedi," uh, yeah, right. So I I experience the body through the breathing. 
Yes. Right? Mm. So the so the through breathing I experience the body. So the, then uh, the, then uh, the, uh, the 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 process is actually uh, uh, then your breathing and breathing out become very uh, subtle. Yeah. Very subtle. That's why sometimes I lose uh, hold of uh, my uh, breathing and breathe out. Right? Why are you comparing Sabakaya Patisan Vedi to this? Though? Uh, I'm wondering whether we are using the same concept to look at the uh, the, the uh, what the, the thing uh, we are talking about, the Chitta Sankara. Chitta Sankara. Yeah. Uh, Chitta Sankara is actually feeling. Vedana. Chitta Sankara refers is an umbrella term. Yeah, okay. Right? It is not just feeling, but also includes perception and mental concomitants. Okay. We, yeah. Feeling and perception, both. Feeling, yeah. perception, and mental. And mental company. Okay. Right. That is Sankara Patisambedi. Mm. In the Sabbakaya, we are still based upon the physicality. Yeah. Okay. In this position, the base becomes, the object becomes mental. Yeah. Sabbakaya is still physical. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now I, I see the difference though, because I have not gone to that level of meditation. So uh, you probably have, you probably have done so, but you've not been able to maintain it. Balance. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, now now I got your point actually very clear. Yes. We will um yeah, because Damsiri, why, why, why I'm telling you is you, that you probably have, because I think earlier in the meditation session, you have mentioned about the experience of joy and happiness during the meditation. That's right, yes. Those are elements which comes at the position of Vedana Anupasana and not Kaya Anupasana. Okay. Right? Now, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the position of Kaya Nupasana, the meditator would experience a joy which arises through accomplishment. This accomplishment is much more gross than the accomplishment that we experience at the position of Vedana Nupasana. Because this accomplishment has more to do with the factors of time, with the factors of um, absorption or nearing absorption. While yep. in the position of Vedana Nupasana, you feed off true bliss of jhana. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Meaning, if I am to repeat that again, Dhyana Angavalatina Preeti Sukhaya Israma Rasindina Patangan Api Vedana Pasana. Right, 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 yeah. A Preeti Sukhaya Patanam Karagana, then Ara Gota Ruping Api Mano Ruping Maruina. Mano Aram. Right. Right. Okay. Right. That is yeah. where now the nimitta becomes stronger. Yeah. Right. Because with the bliss which we will be doing today, with the yeah. bliss arises the nimitta. Now you go. Now you polish it into a finer sense of bliss without the attachment. Then the nimitta gets brighter and brighter. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? <clears throat> Sorry. Yes. All right then. Page number. Daman Pasan, eh? Daman Pasan, right? Yes. Um, 34, please. Daman Pasan. Mind object contemplation. The fourth tetrad, contemplation of mind objects. Anichanu Pasi Asasisa Sikati. He trains himself thus I breathe, I will breathe in contemplating impermanence. Asa, this Isami Sama Isanti. Isami, Sama, Isanti, Sa, this is Sasi, 
this declension is future, right? Meaning it is before the inception into that moment of practice, right? Again, clearly denoting within the sutra that it is not a process of labeling. It is a process of determination and through determination, endeavoring into a practice, right? He trains himself, thus I will, this is this Asasisa, Isami. I will breathe in contemplating impermanence. Anichanupasi pasasisami chisikati. He trains himself, thus I will breathe out contemplating impermanence. Right? I breathe out. Anicha, impermanence. What we call the self, something that appears to be so constant that we do not even notice it. In jhana, it disappears. If you experience this deeply as not self, it is very likely to, likely to give rise to the experience of stream entering. Right? It is very likely to experience stream entry or stream winning. So the partner stage, right? Here, what happens is when we go into a position, when we go into a position of now, remember we have come into this position by the aid of a practice where we have first gained entry into Samadhi through which we have gone, gained entry into Jhana. Through the Jhana, we've seen mind, right? We've seen mind as an experience, as a mental object. Now we are bringing in the big guns, <laughs> which is the application of anicca, dukkha, anatma, right? The three characteristics into the practice, the first of which is being anicca. Here, the seeing of anicca is the ability to see the lack of self within that moment where the concept of I disappears from the mental stream. Why? Because of the jhanic samadhi. Is that clear, everyone? Because of the jhanic samadhi, right? Now, most of you at this stage with our practice for one and a half years, most of you have already gone into jhana, believe it or not, right? Most of you have gone into jhana. The problem that you are currently or most of you are currently having is the inability to maintain yourself within the jhana. Some can, pro, can experience it often. Some experience it time to time. Regardless, the experience is the experience. With the balancing, we learn how to prolong that experience. Do you understand? Right? Let me reiterate that, which is this, ask any questions if you want to. When we look at a stream of consciousnesses, consciousness processes, this is why at the end, the recollection is very important. And in Dhamma Anupasana, that comes in very, it's very important. Why? Because let us say you as a meditator, you experience, because, because of the sense of imbalance at first, you experience different states of mind. You experience different states of mind, right? It is almost as if a person who is sort of, um, you know, sieving for gold at a river, right? collects everything that he has now saved and then goes through it to see whether he has found any precious stones, anything sort of more precious than the other. In the same manner, within the process of recollection, what you, you understood that, that example, right? You know, with, in the same manner, when we experience different states of mind, which we do, which we do, those of samadhi and those of distraction, those of wholesome and those of unwholesome. Then we have a clear image of these experiences that we've had. 
when you are at a moment of presence, you see this just like a piece of artwork on a wall. And you can investigate in your mind how you went into these positions, how you went into these positions, right? Now, during this or with these series of experiences that one has, one sees or experiences that one has gone into experience. I'm sorry, I'm using this word experience again and again. One has experienced a state of samadhi within this series of experiences. Do you understand? When you now tag on to that position of samadhi that you experience, right? You in a way sort of hook yourself onto it. How? By learning, going deeper into understanding what led to it. How did I come about it? What state of mind allowed me to go into it? When you learn that more and more with your, or within your time of recollection, you are able to innovate like you would open a tight door you know that the door can open, so you pull it open in a way. You grab hold of an edge and you just jam it open in the same way you are able to grab hold of this state of mind and open it. Right? Why? Because the more that you learn of how you got in there, even for a split second, the more you know and familiarize yourself with that, with that collection, grouping, position of mind. Why do I say collection, grouping of mind? Because these are mental factors. This is, uh, this is literally... Uh, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyana. Do you understand? This is literally Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyana. You, when you learn about what was the balance which led to that, now you can exploit it and open it far more so that you are able to go into it with much more familiarity of mind. Do you understand? Right? Does anyone have any questions? No question? Okay. Yes, Sriyani. One thing that means now, um, sometimes when you sit down, um, as you sit down, you uh, immediately go into uh, you, uh, Samadhi, is it wrong? Or do you have to go back to again breathing and come back along or just carry on from where you no, start? Not everyone needs to go back. When the familiarity yes. increases, yeah. you can enter it as and when you please. You don't need to go oh, okay. back again. Okay. Right? okay. Remember, okay. because with what you learn, now yeah. by learning, what I mean, if you put it yeah. to technical terms, it's yes. discernment. Yeah. Right? Okay. With what you learn, you change. The mind yeah. changes. Yeah. Right? So now the moment you sit down, you don't need to go through everything. You will go right there. Exactly. And the thing is, you won't be able to enter through a door that you don't know exists. Yeah. 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 That is why the recollection is important. Yes. So, okay. Okay, now I understand. So probably I have got it that far, I think, probably. That's like when I sit down, I can go into straight away in Samadhi. Yeah. Yes. yes, absolutely. So when a person has gone into that state and yeah. familiarizes with the collection, the groupings of consciousness, perception, Vedana, and all of that, which is that consciousness, essentially, then you can go into that consciousness any time that you feel. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Right. Yeah, this question, Sriyani, it is, uh, I mean, this question that you asked, um, uh, you know, it. the answer to that question stems from the question of when we 
die with jhana are we reborn with the same jhana yeah 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 do you yeah. understand yes 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 right then uh, if we pass away with let's say the first jhana right yeah. or the second whatever the corresponding plane of existence that we are reborn in the, there is a question there is a question does yes. a person experience the same jhanic ability in his new abode of existence or the within the new plane of existence yes right yes. now this has sparked debate within yeah. teachers right and yeah. what venerable pau siado maintains is that the same jhana would exist within that realm right the same jhana would exist within that realm why opapatikai satvayo yeah. right they just arise mm -hmm. after the english term for opapatika anyone remember opapatika no right you know just poof your word <laughs> <laughs> the poof without poof, <laughs> right? So you, <laughs> right? Then it is further than sort of you know spoken about in a sense, where then they ask, okay, what about humans? Mm -hmm. Then what happens is why if a human was to have practice or has practice jhana earlier and is reborn within the human realm again. Because yeah. of his wishes to be born in the human realm, why doesn't a human experience jhanic bliss, right? Just as the Brahman would. The first reason the Brahmas are opapatika beings who are reborn instantaneously; they do not go through the womb process, right? The second is within the Brahma realm. The Brahma realm facilitates. this jhanic presence in that realm whilst in the karma loka the karma loka does not facilitate it but everything that arises within the karma loka is to distract it from that jhanic experience okay right yeah. Yeah. distract it from the jhanic experience something that venerable lady siado adds right he says humans or beings the conditioning of humans to constantly work towards the attainment of happiness peace within this lifetime or within every lifetime that a person is born comes from the habit of being within the womb yeah within a position that where the senses are weak objects are minimum hindrances that arise to that weak link in the womb is so minimum that they experience a state of peace and tranquility that surpasses every experience of the sensual pleasure world every experience of the sensual pleasure world this is not, this is taking away jhanic bliss huh? because jhanic bliss is not a sensual pleasure experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right hence venerable lady sadu says because of this reason we find ourselves in a constant need to attain a state of peace to reconnect with the womb experience that we once had but can't remember but that has instated a clear sort of sense of you know happiness or a connection to that happiness right so shriani a person when they do go into an experience they can maintain it they can go into that experience should the person know or can relate to that state of mind that formula that essence of mind that was present okay thank you bante right okay yeah. okay let's get back to the sutra we were here anicca anupasi pasasi sami to sikk He trains himself. Thus, I will breathe in contemplating the fading away of lust, the fading away of lust. He trains himself. Thus, I will breathe out contemplating the fading away of lust. Now, remember, 
when we are at this position, do not forget the earlier tetrads, right? The earlier tetrads is what gives you the essence to come into this state where you are able to contemplate the fading away of lust without the encumbrances of the lack of samadhi arising. This is a position where you would be seeing or experiencing with samadhi, right? With samadhi. Now, let's see what Biraga. <clears throat> Biraga also translated as dispassion. If reflections on impermanence does not work, then one should go on to reflect on the fading away, biraga. Viraga. <laughs> this is when things just disappear. Things which were so close to you that you thought were an essential part of you. Right? Now, this simply cannot be done by, you know, we sometimes we've done meditations where we sort of taken ourselves back to a position where we've lost things, lost people, lost uh, certain things that we've had in our lives, right? But that and this is two very different experiences, right? Here, you are now able to see the viraga, right? The fading away in a way that you truly connect to it, not in a way that you must show it to yourself, right? The determination that we place in the beginning is what then takes us into that position of mind where we can focus on the viraga, the dispassion aspect of that which arises and passes away in the mind as mental object. Do you understand? Right? Now, this is not the end. We are going to go deeper into it. So, you know, don't you worry. Okay? We are going to go deeper into it. So in this position of fading away, the fading away experience or with samadhi, when you are watching over the arising and the passing away of different mental formations, the fading away aspect, focusing now on the fading away aspect of that same mental collection group as what a person did here. I will breathe out contemplating impermanence. Whatever methods you can use, anicca, viraga, niro, then pasaddi, patinisag, right? And patinisag. These four are options that gives a person, in a way, the, the hold that that person needs to now reel the person into a deep experience with regards to the way the dhammas work, right? But here, dhamma. We are not referring to Buddhism. We are referring to phenomena. The way these phenomena work. Right? Nirodha nupassi asa sissa meti sikkati. Nirodha nupassi pasa sissa meti sikkati. Nirodha. Something that was once there had now disappeared. Right? Earlier with Viraga, this is when things just disappear. Things which were so close to you that were an essential part of you. Nirodha is something that was once there, that, sorry, something that was once there had now disappeared completely. So much of the universe that you knew has ceased. You're in a completely different space. What you thought, what you thought was important has gone. Cessation is also the, is also the third noble truth, the cessation of suffering. The cause of that cessation is letting go. The cause of that cessation is letting go. And what's left? The opposite of dukkha. It is sukha, happiness. The ending of suffering is happiness. But this happiness 
please do not connect this happiness to our mundane gross definitions of the experience of happiness that we have right the happiness that we have cannot be connected to this happiness this is a far more profound experience of happiness which is devoid of one very essential part which makes it a world of difference which is attachment why because this happiness comes through the essential part of letting go right comes to the essential part of letting go now let's read this again nirodha something that was once there had now disappeared something that was once there had now disappeared so much of the universe that you knew has ceased now for example if we are to take all our ages the youth that we enjoyed our teen years that we enjoyed once has now completely disappeared right has now completely disappeared now but there is something which still connects you this very day to those teen years that you once enjoyed you might be a completely different person however there is some connection that we draw from this present moment in time to those years back in the day right that essentially is done through the process of the consciousness the nature of consciousness itself which is memory which is an element of consciousness however the memory that we have connecting this person from year to year has the element of attachment atma which holds on to this process of self but we might be an entirely different person now or the world that we knew earlier might be far different from what we know it to be now this essence of letting go letting go comes through the ability of a person to see the atma within the consciousness which makes it which gives us the illusion that it is all one that it is all same that it is still the same do you understand the atma connecting and linking each year or moment to moment in this process of nirodha a meditator goes into the position of seeing that this which appeared once has now completely ceased to exist has now completely ceased to exist this is present even in this very moment this is present even in this very moment the reason that we can't see that presence of nirodha happening is because of our strong attachment to the views and everything that supports a concept of self when samadhi is present supported by jnanic penetrative wisdom now we are able to put aside those aspects brought about proliferated by the hindrances to now see a nature the nature is clear it's less muddy when we observe the less muddy nature now we see a process now we see a process that process is what we take as nirodha object do you understand right now when we are learning these things right please do not take it in a way oh maybe i should try that no don't try this now learn it for now apply it later on what you have to develop upon is the kayagata sati part right kayagata sati part okay any questions vante yes shri ji vante um, you know the the when you are in that state that you feel suddenly your mind is totally blank 
there's no thoughts and that no thoughts feeling is a relief yeah is that the neurotic position no. and you want to go into that near sort of wanting to be in that of course. place where you suddenly feel um, there's no, absolutely um, no thoughts no feelings uh, and your mind crave to be in that place yes is that yes. no it is not aha uh-huh. that's samadhi right that is samadhi right okay. if within this position of nirodha there is no specific craving here mm-hmm. right it is a position if we are to say it is a complete embracing of reality in such a profound way mm-hmm. that you do not there is nothing pulling you into the other side right something is right in front of you and there are no disturbances pulling you into 100 million sides giving you 100 million views on the occasion because yeah. the entrances are so subdued yeah right. but i there are times that i have how i experience it's like a very addictive place yes that samadhi yeah, i, I oh, okay that is samadhi complete dark, complete sense of emptiness a position of solitude you can't hear anything you can't feel anything it is like a moment of utter emptiness right mm-hmm. that is a moment of samadhi but the moment that you that thought arises oh what is this oh this feels good right that is samadhi imbalance yeah yeah i know right? yeah so understand that position shyane within this position that will not arise mm-hmm. yeah right that will not arise now when we take techniques such as yes samanta right before i come on to samanta samanta you can unmute yourself but we are now when for example with the power technique what they would do to come into this this stage is this they have a training or their training works with a sense of reinforcement practice mm-hmm. how do they reinforce themselves Paul Sharu acknowledges that we live in a world full of danger. So to arouse a sense of dhamma samvega and also motivation in every other aspect of the way to further um instigate a sense of power within the being the power technique would take you through the 40 odd techniques of meditation and at the end and they don't tell you to go deep into any meditation because when you start from the first and move on to the 40th the power yeah. technique ensures a process where you will now through technique to technique you will be yes. able to little by little strengthen the samadhi to such an extent where then you would be able to go into a vipassana state of samadhi where you are now able to experience this mm-hmm. eight right now we have not done the uh, stages of vipassana as yet then the mm-hmm. stages of vipassana are reinforced in different ways through the satpatthana right mm-hmm. the power technique works on a method of reinforcement mm-hmm. right so here what that you will not en- understand what the difference is right away but you will you will in a couple of weeks when we go into the power and the mahasi technique separately but what is to be understood is the importance that is placed upon a mind which has the ability and the skill of samadhi and a samadhi which goes into a panitha samadhi or the full samadhi force of jhana where now you do not have the mind being pulled into different sides shriyani when you yeah. experience a state of darkness emptiness a state of calm profound bliss and profound tranquility when the mind thinks ah this is interesting that is where the mind is pulled yeah. right it is pulled to in the essence of karma rag right that is what a pull ekak thama api nathi kara gatta hmm hmm you understand that yeah. is why the buddha to support the dissolution of that pull that dissolution of passion towards that pull and everything that pulls you that is yeah. in samadhi pranya 
Okay. Right. Yes, Samantha. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Bandi, when you said that pull, um, sorry, what pulls you to the Kama Raga or something? Well, what pulls you? Just imagine the hindrances themselves. Kama Tan, um, uh, tell me the first hindrance, sen hindrance to sensual pleasure. Right? Yeah. What's the Pali, please? Kama. Ka. <laughs> Kama Chanda. Kama Chanda. Kama Chanda. Kama Chanda. <laughs> How am I even teaching you all? Okay. Kama Chanda. We are part of the team. In the Uddhacha Kupacha, we take a chance. This is what pulls you. Right? This is what pulls you. Example. Let's take an example other than Kama Chanda. Right? Bichikitcha, which is the most insidious of all pulls. Right? Bichikitcha spreads like a wildfire. Right, you start doubting people, and now even your children, your family, your parents, you start doubting and doubting and doubting and doubting. Now you doubt yourself, you doubt your mind, leading yourself into a position of hysteria. That is the pull, Samantha. Mm. That is the pull, right? Yeah. This is the role of prapancha, mm. pulling you. Right? So the moment, the reason that balance is so important is because in the indriyas, when these five indriyas work together, the pull becomes ineffective. Because why? The mentality is supported by five powerful forces which keeps the pull away. Do you understand? Vante, it is the Vanchanika Chaitasika? No, this is not Vanchanika Dhamma, right? Mm -hmm. It can be. We can explain it through Vanchanika Dhammas, right? Mm -hmm. But this here, we are talking about direct encumbrances to Vipassana, mm -hmm. of which Dhamma Vitaka is also an encumbrance. Do not forget this Dhamma Vitaka, because Dhamma Vitaka is something that I've truly seen even with my practice, my personal practice, I've seen Dhamma Vitaka really wrecks us, right? Because we tend to be applying Dhamma too much. We are too focused on applying Dhamma because of our attachment to Dhamma rather than experiencing the Dhammas. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm. But then Bhante, you know this, uh, the five hindrances, uh, when you're in that state, the jhana state, I thought the five hindrances are temporarily subdued anyway. Yeah. That's, so. exactly why, that's exactly why we cultivate this process, this 16-fold process, illuminates a path which has been reinforced in the beginning with jhana. Mm. So much so that the three first tetras are all about jhana. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So the other tetras, I thought they Jhanas, you have to be in the jhanas as well. They're all jhana. They're all jhana. So oh, first right. is the foundation, so, second is entry, third is jhana. Mm. So which states of the jhana, one, two, three, or four, Does it, or do we know which ones? Well, up to, it can be up to four. Where the Dhammanupasana happens in the fourth jhana, is it? Can we, you say we that? We will come into that. We will come into that. We are going to discuss that separately. Right, okay. we are going to discuss that separately. We will come into that, Samantha. But yes. when we, for example, with uh, with Lakshman, uh, the question that we hear with, for example, Chittapat Samvedi, right, this can go up to the third jhana because here Preeti Sukha is within this experience of perception because of Vedana, right? That we are going to go in separately, mm. all right. Sorry, but Bhante, my original, sorry, can I just ask my question? Um, that the first, sorry, yeah, that was just a little uh, thing because of uh, what Shirani said. I, I just wanted to clarify something. But my question was, sorry, just quickly. Um, so in this uh, Dharmanu Pastana, uh, uh, I think you were reading a, a little excerpt from uh, Ajahn Brahm. He says something. I was just wondering what that thing was. And also the difference, uh, is it that the knower and the know, knower and the knowing, um, something disappears, the knower disappears or something. 
what does that exactly mean? All right, so we are here, right? Yeah. yeah. Here. The last paragraph, something oh, that right. was once there has oh. disappeared. Remember, uh, all right, Samantha, this is Dhammanupassana. As mm. I mentioned, Dhammanupassana is the contemplation of phenomena, Dhammas. We don't usually translate Dhammas because there is no proper translation which incorporates everything that Dhammas represent. Dhammas is the reality of phenomena. So something here relates to anything which is a phenomena, a part of existence. Do you understand? For a person, it exists, this experience of something can experience, what do I say? This something can be experienced by way of a spectrum. From something being your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your family, your friends, your teachers who've passed, who've been in past, who've been healthy and become unhealthy, to time changing, energy is changing, energy is arising and disappearing or moving, converting, light moving, air moving, elements changing. This whole spectrum is something. What the something is for you depends on your intellect and position of mind. For Venerable Sariputta, the something would have been far more greater than Venerable Anuruddha something. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Right? The Buddha something was far more greater than all of the other monks something. Right? Mm -hmm. It relates to the mind's ability to go into understanding a certain phenomena. I see. Right? So, I, I mean, the Buddha something relates to us a whole process of consciousness, right? Which seems so applicable. To us 2600 years ago so you can imagine the buddha's keen intellect you know what i mean so this mm. something refers to dhammas mm. dhamma anupasana, phenomena mm. a part of samsara and this can be any part mm. do you understand yes Bhante. so it's not the consciousness the awareness disappearing or it could be, you know, the nowhere and the something. That is too gross. That yeah. is too gross. How are you able to see consciousness disappearing? Mm. Right? What you see is an essential experience disappearing. Because this Nirodha is personal, Samantha. Mm. This experience of Nirodha is personal. It has nothing to do with what the Buddha experienced or what an Arahant experienced. This is a personal thing. It's an oh, yes. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm getting confused with the, the two sheets, you know, the, the uh, something, you know, you've got the consciousness in, in the cause and effect, um, the dependent origination. You've got the consciousness on one side and then you've got the Nama Rupa and then within the Nama, you've got the, the aggregates of uh, the last one, the vinyana or the tension, what they say. Uh, so when one goes, the other one flops. It can't, they have to be two, two together or something. I'm just trying to put that in. Into Parijasa Father. Yeah. Why don't you not put that in? Why don't mm -hmm. you just try to ex understand it as a phenomenon? Because okay. if you go down that road, Samantha, you'll get a bit confused. We yeah. can go down yeah. that road. We can, we can do it all together. Right? Yes, After yeah. we go through the sutra and when we are going through the commentaries. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. And everyone else, try to understand this as a practitioner, not as a philosopher. Mm. Right? Take one moment of your mind. Take a moment when you were sad, when you were angry, whatever it is, and try to apply it to that. If you take this in a philosophical way, it will make no sense. You have to connect it to your meditation, to your experience. And sometimes you might try to think, you might think because of Hinamana, okay, how can I connect this into my experience? You can. 
right? See the phenomena's existence within your experience, right? That is how you connect this. That is how you should understand it, not in any other way. Mm, that makes sense. Thank you, Bante. That's good. Yeah. 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 Bank, we, we bank. Do now father, but later, not now. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Bante, I have a question. Christian Bante. Yes, hey, Mali. Uh, Bante, regarding uh, Sriyani's question, mm -hmm. um, how to stop that pull? Right. How yeah. do you stop the pull? See, you have to stop the pull. Uh, so, back to Vedana, is, is it ah, help okay. you? Okay. Vedana means the the body the the body sensation. Mamke, I was thinking to see the phenomena in the pool. Can you? Mm. Okay, the pool. The pool is a prapancha, right? At the moment of practice. When this pull arises, right? It's a mental state. Pull is a mental state, right? No, you feel like staying there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, pull, right. the pull would all yeah. be either tanha, ditti, or mana. Tanha, and it has a role of adipati also there. Mm. Because often we take satisfaction in that stream of thought, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if, uh, you know, I've mentioned, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, when uh, even at a moment of meditation, when the mind is empty, you get a little bit, you know, um, you get startled a bit. Sometimes mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. the mind is so empty that you get startled. Oh, what is this? Yes. Yeah. Right? That is the pull, right? Remember, the pull can... Although I might use this sort of just this term that I've just literally come up with, pull, you know, such a bad word, really, you know, really a essence of prapancha. Uh, know, that that means you feel like staying there, no? That's the that's, a, that's how I feel. Yes, yes, Hema Mari. I do yeah. feel the same as you do. What yeah. you I understand yeah. what you're explaining. Yeah. 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 It, it's not only, it's not only black, it's not black and white, yes. You feel like staying there is once. Yeah. Yeah. But this pull comes from Vitarka. This Vitarka applies a notion of mind where whatever it is, it can be Tanha, Ditti, or Mana upon this experience that you're undergoing. Right? How can you overcome this experience? Because sometimes, yes, it can be the attraction to be there. Sometimes it can be a, a, a startle. <laughs> You know, you're surprised, you're startled of this experience, right? Sometimes, you know, when people experience a state, they become quite sort of, you know, taken aback with the whole experience. That happens as well, you know. Sometimes people, for example, why would metta bhavana be difficult for some? Why would asava bhavana be difficult for some? Why would marnanu sati bhavana be difficult for some, right? Because why we that sort of brings out a side that we are not used to, that the mind is not used to, right? Brings to mind something that we rather not think about or bother ourselves with. So it's not only an attraction towards it, it can also be friction with it, right? It also can be friction with it because remember, one moment you have a moment where you are lucky, I might say lucky, but you are, you are able to balance everything in a way that you reach a moment of samadhi. Mm. This is one moment. After that, you had 100 moments of hindrances. Where is the pull now? The pull is, of course, going to be the hindrances. Right? The hindrances. Eka hinda tamai, for example, within jhanic experiences, we find a sense of pull towards sukha. That jhanic bliss. This also reinstates the idea that we must practice jhana. But then we use it, we go ahead with it, and we also get rid of it at a time. Right? So now what meditators essentially do is because they now know that process, that path, 
they don't give themselves enough time to get involved with the jhana. Pasveni dhyane karanna one day, devini dhyane karanna hadara. Hatharavini dhyane tula karanna one day, devini dhyane tula karanna hadara. Hatharavini dhyane karanna hadara. Right? You have to, this is like a bait, you say. Right? To instigate a deeper attraction to the jhana, what a person could do is, first of all, the person is firm upon a life free of hindrances. With that, he now endeavors upon the cultivation of jhanic absorption. Right? Remember, within the Satipatthana, this sutra that we are going through, although we might be starting with jhana, it is paced towards nibbana, nothing else. It is paced towards nibbana. How do we know this? How do we know this? Here. All of this. That is how we know it, right? This is the mind of a person, of a monk, of a practitioner. And these are the motivations of that practitioner. The destruction of the three fetters and with the diminishing of lust, hate, and delusion. And then what are the motivations it comes? The devotion to the Sammapadanas, the Iddipadas, the pancha indriyas. This is what motivates you. Do you understand? So, nibbana in mind, but nibbana not in a way of fetish, fetish, fetishizing, fetishizing something that you haven't seen. What these experiences are, or what these balances, senses of balances brings you, is a taste. This taste is then something which eggs you on to a position of deeper understanding of reality, a commitment to understand and come to ground with reality. That is what we find ourselves in. A commitment to a state of mind free of the hindrances. That is what keeps the disturbances away. Because we find now when you become excited, you realize there's nothing to get excited uh, Bante, thinking about the pressure points, would, would it help? Pressure points. Uh, the pressure points. Back to pressure points, no? Pressure points. Uh, I mean, to, to neutralize that, that feeling, what we have to do, I, I, can't, I can't understand what you said, Bante. I want to, the, the, my question is, to uh, now we know to get um, pre, uh, too much sugar is not good. So how do you balance that? It's not the fact of too much sugar. How do you know what sugar <laughs> is, or whether you need one kilo of sugar or two kilos of sugar? You can't that. measure sugar like that. No, the, the, but what I what I mean is the feeling of feeling That's of staying there. Correct. Uh, the instigation of mind to stay away from that sort of a position comes essentially through the training itself. Okay. Right? Example. Hey, Mali, you know very well when a nimitta arises, you don't attach yourself to nimitta. Why don't you attach yourself to nimitta? Because it keeps you from your final goal. That is why we don't get excited. It is not... You can't explain this in a way that you would say, if you do this, this will correct itself. No. This is your Nisumansikara. This is balance. Balance comes from those Iddipadas and everything that comes. Dhyana, Etika, Vardhane, Karagane, Enota are a balance. Right? Okay. It is because of that balance that a person can go into the Manapasana. Right? So, Hemamali, you're thinking, what if with what I am today, what if, how can I deal with Dhammanapasana? Then that's wrong. 
you won't be the same person who you are today. You'll be an entirely different person. Your attractions would be entirely different. Your vices would be entirely different. What you consider as pleasure will be entirely different. That is what is to be understood here. Isn't that Nirodha itself? Isn't that dissolution itself? It, that insight will support you at that time. But we cannot say, you know, you know it's, it's the same question as in, for example, with uh, Sila Vishuddhi. With Sila Vishuddhi. How do we know that our Sila is enough? Do you understand? How do we know? None of our sealers, yours or mine, is perfect. It's not. And it might never be perfect. However, how do we then tread on the path? We tread on the path by, whilst we protect the sealer, api egama vidarshana vatvadana. So now the guilt that we might have in certain areas, not to say that we get rid of guilt, but the thing is when with this mutual cultivation and development, our focus, we change as beings, we change as persons, right? So the person who would sit in front of a TV and eat a kilo of a tub of ice cream is no more there now. The person who would waste his or her time in you know, in front of, you know, in, with, a, with a beer in front of a match for days on days might not be there anymore now. Do you understand? Do not compare or do not try to understand Dhamma Nupasana, this specific part, connecting it to what you're doing in the sense of as the person who is there now, when you come into this position, the samadhi will have is far more greater. The hindrances will be far more lesser. The pull will be far less subtle. Do you understand? Right? A love that change, a love your learning to come through experience in that way. Then the path will be far more clearer for you. Because, for example, I might, I, might be, I might be struggling not with karmata, I might be struggling with um, um, Vyapada. You might be struggling with karmata. Do you understand? It will be, it's not to say that it will be a completely different experience. What it will be is you will have to deal with or deal with emotions, attractions of mind onto a completely different um, area from another person. Right? But One day, at, at that point, will Sati help? Will Sati help me? Sati, Sati Sampajan. I mean, knowing that. Which point? Uh, I mean, when you feel like lightness and feel like staying there, Right, uh, will uh, to know that I mean to be sati sampajana help? No, no, uh, sati will help, not alone. Uh, okay, sati will help, but not alone. At that point, sati alone is useless. What are you going to do with sati alone? Uh, knowing that, knowing that, no, 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 no. sati alone, it's useless. Yeah. Sati I just want to know. All right, okay. no, no, no. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> With only Guru, I have to ask. <laughs> no, I know, right? What I'm trying to say is Sati alone is useless. Why? Because when we come into this position, we will learn through practice the balance. Now it's not Sati, it's Indriya. Do you understand? You know, it's something like that, right? So need practice, yeah? Knowing and practice, yeah. You will form, you will form connections, right? Sati alone, we have Sati already. 
It is because we have Sati that you and I are able to communicate and this whole team here. But Sati alone is actually useless. Right? Sati has to be enforced and reinforced and supported. That is when Sati develops an ability of cutting out the weeds of hindrances. Do you understand? You know? There is a sword and then there is Excalibur. Excalibur is like the hindra, the injuries. You know? It is something like that. So as you go on, this balance that this Samadhi balance, maybe for a lot of the people who are here, something that is really missing is the fact of the lack of recollection. Right? The lack of recollection, because of the lack of recollection, you do not know what you have. Do you understand? Because of the lack of recollection. Now, Hemali, you have improved far, so much from when you first started meditating. You couldn't even sit properly at first, I remember. But now you're like a statue. <laughs> you don't even move. <laughs> right? You're just there. <laughs> like the screen is like stuck. Right? So you have obviously cultivated a lot, developed a lot. But the thing is, you don't know, right? You don't know. Why? Because of the lack of recollection. That is why that recollection bit at the end is so important. Because then you know what areas you need to focus, what, area, what level of balance you have, and what further balance you need to attain. That will give you the stability because these questions will not be present at that time. With the ekality in the manusya, sampoonnima venas. Right? Ekali in the manusya, as they come up, come on, samadhi gata venas. Ekali in the manusya, as they come up, come on, india. Ekali in the manusya, when he wants to get up, he will get up. <clears throat> he, he will not be fighting with hatred or anything that of that sort. All of those things will be suppressed. Yes, Mala. Mahmi, can you explain the term recollection, please? What you uh, I couldn't yeah. get the meaning of it. The recollection, I will we will come into it. We will come into it with the sutra. Right? There's more to come. All right. Shall we go back to the sutra? Hey Mali. Yes, I'm, Bante. You know, I'm not attacking you, okay? I'm just... Uh, no, 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 no. I, I know you, Bante. <laughs> My guru. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bante, shall I ask... Oh, well, my question at the end, then, I'll, after the sutta. Uh, no, go ahead, Samantha. Yeah, uh, sorry, just quickly. Um, yeah, I, I was going to ask what Marla asked as well, what that when, when Bante meant by recollection. Um... I was just wondering whether is that you know what were well, two questions. But when you're uh, when one the mind when the mind once the mind is stilled, and then you're completely still and you're um, going through what whatever's in the mind, uh, being aware of what's going on, is that so? When you come out of the stillness, the jhana, is that what you mean by the recollection? And secondly, this jhana business now it it seems a bit scary. Uh, from what I don't know because with, you know when you don't hear anything and you're in a complete state of stillness and so you're say if uh, one is meditating in the room and you you're in this like um, um this in this um, <laughs> this zone and then say if my mum's or someone's calling you you know uh, Samantha Samantha come down and you can't hear anything and something and then people say that you know you've got to make a determine you, you could be like that for an hour or half an hour or some people have gone for days I think even Bunty said that's one of uh, someone's uh, some monk has gone for three days or something without eating so I mean you know we are we sort of like going into different zones and I mean it sounds a bit scary I mean and you had to make a determination to understand what does that all that mean <laughs> sorry <laughs> Oh, well, oh. Samantha, well, this Samantha is the textbook definition of the pull. <laughs> Samantha, the, 
the thing okay well there is nothing to be afraid of you know it's not like you go into a position of mind where you where are you you know going to a place where you don't want to go you will be aware you will know where you want to and what you want to do right and people usually at that situation say they will determine right uh, how long they want to go into jhana and all of that right and why do we and that's exactly that's really a textbook definition of the pull the pull which instigates an idea that a state of nothingness is empty i'm sorry a state of nothingness is scary mm. a state of nothing something is better than nothing mentality that's exactly the mentality which keeps us from nibbana you know what i mean that is the pull samanta that is the pull but the thing is remember you're not going to experience this tomorrow oh no. you might i mean i hope you do right <laughs> right don't think so no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've got a white wait while to go yeah unfortunately yeah I have to clean my house first put away the laundry yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <So. laughs> start there yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes so this is it's going to be a, it's going to be a progress and remember Mm. Um, and remember it is because you want it to be a progress that it is going to be a i'm sorry it's because you want it to be a process that it's going to be a pro- process mm. the conviction of mind into the present if it is so strong we would be able to reach into states so deep right at this moment but it is because of this pull which convinces us of something else that we tend to latch on to that more familiar sense which is the karma loka mm. yeah you know that is that is what we observe you know when we close our eyes and we are sitting there observing the breath and as you observe the breath if you're heeding now this voice working you know seeing whether am i doing it right am i doing it right the skill of shutting that voice up not in a hateful manner of course but in a way that you just shut it out where your importance is placed upon this experience of the breath and not that voice the ego center mm. that is a skill that is the letting go that letting go is far more profound and far more relatable to the dhamma than the letting go that you would sort of materially gifting something to a person mm. i think at the end you know when you finally let go of your consciousness that's what i think i'm fearful heading yeah, to I mean, yeah. i mean uh, why are you fearing something you know which might be far away from you at the moment right why don't you take it one step at a time yes you know mm. what i mean mm. right mm. but mm. remember that is where virag must come in mm. so it's a step by step process and you train yourself it, it doesn't have to be it oh. doesn't have to be angulima mm. attained enlightenment just like that mm. atara attained enlightenment just like that right yes we will bring in the sansara puruddha and all of that but remember the sansara puruddha establish a sense of seal samadhi prakna levels in a person which enable them to now at a aha moments time go into a realization to understand oh this is not what's important this sort of bliss of shunyata or this bliss of the presence is what is important that is what gives us that ability to go into deeper states of awareness mm. right and and don't you think samanta don't anyone think just because you go into a state of samadhi that you're going to divorce your husband the next day it's not going to happen like that we don't become monsters we become enlightened beings not monsters mm. <laughs> oh no yeah because your metta increases i think is not yeah no absolutely we assume that our whole lives are going to crumble why do we assume this <laughs> it's not so <laughs> you know it is we are not devil worshippers we are trying to 
<laughs> right if anything our lives are going to become far more beautiful and far more pleasant and far more present yeah mm. not the other way around right not the other way around and even if you do go into a jhana when you wake up you will be with the world but the way that you interact with the world is going to be different because you are not going to be interacting with the world with your dirty lenses of hindrances the scope of hindrance you're going to be um working with the world with aloba adosa amoha you're going to experience and enjoy life far more purely in a way that you will not have regrets and fear your death when why is that experience so unfathomable and scary you know you won't get lost then you come back to a uh, think of this when you have a perfect night's rest a perfect night's rest where you just go to sleep beautifully right at the time that you want and you come out from it isn't that something that you really like you're so rested you're energized you feel so active in the morning and up to do anything mm right samadhi is going to be far more powerful than that yeah do you understand this picture that we've painted within ourselves to think that we are going to become like aliens living no it's not so mm. right and that state of shunyata that state of nothingness is your exact being the thing is we've surrounded ourselves we we'll, we've created so many facades around us in our life that we have been unable to connect to that peace with it the meditation samadhi helps us connect to that peace nothing else mm. it's not taking you anywhere it's taking you inward that's it yeah yeah that's lovely thank you bhante yeah that's very good yeah and yeah. because i feel like a lot of us including you know myself you know we fear this sort of enlightenment in such a way this sense of sunyata we are we sometimes would say you know something is better than nothing i'll just be a good person but at the end of the day you know it's not like we are converting into something so horrible if anything what our lives are going to become is far far more easy far far more enjoyable far far more metta filled yeah it is something to look forward to not something to run away from mm and resilient maybe yeah and resilient in every is every sense of the word mm that's good we yeah. will not be clinging and attaching to every thing that every tom dick and harry throws in our way mm. yeah you know so how beautiful would that be if we you know if if i or you or anyone here you know has cancer tomorrow and if if my whole life you know turns completely around to a way that i can't live happily anymore because i think i'm damaged goods so i think that i'm sort of dying of cancer and there's no way out for me what if i'm able to face cancer with a wholesome mind and just grace gracefully bow out what a beautiful experience that is mm. you know what if we all lose everything tomorrow you know like people lost their families you know people went crazy because they couldn't handle the fact how people lost their families to the tsunami people some of the people some people went absolutely mad they became lunatics because they just couldn't handle how from a moment's time they lost everything and everyone just imagine living a life without that how beautiful that is mm. you know and we fear that beauty because we never seen we never experienced it we don't even know whether it's possible because all we known is attachment and clinging and anger and ditty and fighting and all of that garbage again and again and again and again that peace seems so far away and so scary you know this is something that we must think about i think i mean this is something that i also think about all the time you know? thank you bhakti that was very uh, beautiful yeah thank you you know <sighs> all right so it's 8:33 um 
reading finish much of the sutra. Panthesh, yes. we all yes. are in different levels, isn't it? And therefore, how do we, um, uh, I just don't know, how do we, can we have separate kamatahan so that we can sort out ourselves? Well, well, the thing is, all of this, which we are going through, and anyways, we do have self Sundays, but all of this that we are going through is also, in a way, is Kamatahan, right? What, but you also have the Saturday and Sunday opportunities where you can sort of, you know, share. Um, but of course, anyone is sort of welcome to message me or email me or whatever, and then, you know, speak to me over the phone if you require to. Um, um, required to, I will be more available when I return to uh, UK, hopefully very soon. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but yes, uh, of course that is possible, but you know, you all have the opportunity of Saturday and Sunday and all of this, you know, just don't just be in the present, you know, just be in the present and see what you can do right at this very moment in the way that you deal with things. And it will become infinitely more clear, infinitely more clear. And, and you know, do, at this stage, don't be too interested in connecting everything, you know, with the Padmasampada and with the Patana. If you know, you can, but maybe it can maybe confuse you a little bit. Right. I am struggling with that Bhante, connecting with those things because a lot of the things I don't, uh, I didn't, I didn't study as in deeply. Therefore, I am sometimes thinking, oh, do I need to know this? That you know, that is something. Uh, Triani, when the time comes, you know, when the time comes, at that moment you will know that you're missing something. Right at this moment, you're not missing anything, right? Right at this moment, you're not missing anything, but the sense of you have to get rid of, you have to come into the present, right? You have to come into the present because the practice of meditation, regardless of everything that you know, regardless of all of that, it's not about that. It's about being present and observing, simply that, right? Simply that. And with this, and with the way that we are going to go over this sort of, this sutra, in such great detail, you know, there will be a lot of questions that are going to be answered. You know, I want everyone to sort of, I hope you've printed out this whole entire sutra and you need yeah. a copy for yourself, right? You need a copy for yourself and have it in a separate, you have it in a separate uh, file or whatever it is. Because later, after we finish the sutra, we are going to come back to the sutra with the commentaries. Okay. Right? So this is the first time we are reading. So we will actually be going through the sutra a second time with okay. the commentaries. Okay. Right? So to make it even more clearer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So to make it even more clearer. So, you know, don't you worry about, you know, connecting everything. Just understand and try to sort of see the way of connecting at this moment. And the most important thing is just continue your practice in the presence. Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I've taken enough of time. Um, I think I've sent out, yes. So on Saturday, we are having the Sangamita day sort of panel discussion, which I've already sent out. We are having the retreat uh, on Sunday, um, on Sunday. And um, yes, so I'll see you on Saturday. All right. Do Saturday, Saturday Bhavana is not going to be. Well, uh, yes, uh, because uh, it's at 11 o'clock, isn't it? Session. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's uh, better if we don't have the Bhavana, or I mean, we can do it. I don't mind. Depends on your. Uh, but you might not have time to. Or is it going to be in a separate place? No, no, it's going to be online. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's, online. Uh, it's online, but if you all want to cancel it, because it's, uh, it's like it takes your whole entire morning, uh, just put it on your group. Put it on the group if you want to, you know, if you prefer it not to be there. Or maybe we can just do one number or whatever. Yeah, probably we'll one, one number. number. Yeah. Please, please. Yeah, okay.
and we will do yeah, it. Please. Yeah. All right. So okay. nine to nine ten or ten. Yeah, nine. Nine to Everyone's ten. All right. So take care. Everyone's having a bad day. Everyone's having a bad day. Everyone's having a bad day.